here with the LSU Athletics Department as Director of External Relations for the Tiger football team. He came to LSU in 2002, and after coaching at Independence High School for 34 years, 22 as head coach. And at Independence, he posted a record of 205 wins and only 69 losses. He won nine district titles, led his team to a state championship game twice, and he's a great friend of the quarterback club. LSU will travel to face Mississippi State Saturday at 8.15 in Starkville, Skip Burton's favorite place. Please give a warm Brandon Hall Sports Foundation Quarterback Club welcome to Coach Charlie Maglio of the LSU Tigers. Greater New Orleans Sports Foundation. Uh, Kenny, I believe like you got yourself a winner. And uh, I'd like to see the ladies in the audience and whenever I open up for questions, ask some. Please. I want to know what we got from last Saturday night's game. Well, there's two things. Nobody got hurt other than a manager trying to get out of the ring. He fell. And God still remains undefeated, I can tell you. Speaking about LSU, the depth chart, I want to go through it with you real quickly. On offense, we have uh, 14, this is our two deep, two deep. Offense, we have 14 Louisiana kids in the two deep. Five of them are from New Orleans. On defense, we have 11 Louisiana kids. Six from New Orleans. And things we really needed to get from the first game, which we didn't get to play. Need to evaluate, evaluation of all the players, uh, not just the first liners, but the other kids that, uh, that made wind up having to play some this year. We needed Brandon Harris to play a game uh, with 100,000 people in it, without cowbells, like you'll see this week, but he didn't get the chance to do that. And we needed to solidify some depth, especially in, uh, in a few positions. Uh, defensive line, offensive line, and a linebacker. We just needed to, to find out if we had some more depth uh, and kids sometimes play a lot better when the light's on. Uh, the strength of our team, most of all, all of you know already, but I'll, I'll give it to you. Running back and the depth of our running backs is tremendous. I mean, we have four kids that can really play. Uh, not just, and uh, that's including Leonard Fournette, who may be one of the best in the country. Offensive line, we have a lot of depth there also. Uh, a quality group of wide receivers, but led by Trayvon Doral and Malachi Dupree, and a couple of kids here from, uh, from the New Orleans area that's going to be phenomenal. Uh, we have a lot of speed on defense, a lot of speed. We don't have a lot of depth at linebacker. I, I think we have four or five that we plan on playing. Uh, defensive tackles are really good, but there's only three or four that we feel really good about, so we have to develop some depth there. But recruiting is going real well in that, in that uh, department or position, so we'll be all right. And. Uh, our secondary is probably as good from top to bottom as, as anybody in, in the country has. I mean, we lost Jalen Mills to uh, a freak injury, and I think he'll be back in four weeks. Uh, but we were able to replace him quickly because we have so many of them back there. Our weaknesses, naturally, is, uh, is a quarter, inexperience at quarterback, not talent, inexperience at quarterback. And that's why he needed to play this week and depth at linebacker and defensive tackles. Uh, this week's game, uh, you know, it's an 8-15 kickoff, and for all you tailgaters, or people that like to barbecue at home, it's okay for y'all, but think about those kids having to wait in the rooms until 8-15 to play a ball game. It's, it could become a problem. Uh, Dak Prescott is back. That's a problem. And 
and we and they played last week against USM, who looked like a, a, a much improved football team. Uh, so they got one game under their belt, and we did not. So that's that's where we are with the Mississippi State Mississippi State game. They are, they don't have an awful lot of returning starters, but they have the one returning starter that makes a difference, and that's Dak Pres Prescott at, at, at uh, quarterback. Uh, that's kind of the uh, the lay of the land, but I'd like to get some questions. But before, before and then after the questions, I, I got a few things I want to go over with. As all of you may know. <laughs> questions. Raise your hand. Microphone here. No questions today. Yes, sir. Yeah, last year, the uh, kicking game kind of had some issues late in the game. Thank you. <clears throat> what about that issue? Right now, uh, the Delahousse, Kobe Delahousse is doing really well the whole camp. So, uh, you know, he, he just got in a slump last year, but I think he's going to be all right. But uh, uh, Jamie Keene uh, has got a tremendous leg. He just has to get more consistent. You're correct. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, Brandon Harris last year struggled with the playbook and, and a couple other things. And, but Cam, Cameron's known for developing quarterbacks. So can you talk about the development he's had in the offseason going into this year? Well, I just think that uh, being there a whole year and then going through the summer with the receivers against the secondary, but, you know, in the voluntary program, uh, you know, when the kid was in high school, I don't know if he ever called a play from the huddle. Because in the days of run and shoot and spread, uh, it's all called from the sideline. So uh, I think that uh, he's vastly improved, uh, but we won't know that until the bullets start flying and they're fixing to start flying by uh, Saturday night. We'll find out. I think he's going to be fine. Yes, sir. Anybody else? I have, yes, sir. go ahead. I know we only saw four plays Saturday night. On the big sample, big sample, yes, sir. On the defensive side, <clears throat> but I realized that we did a lot of blitzing. Is this going to be the scheme for the year? Yeah, I think that, uh, I don't, I think we're going to have to do some of that because uh, defensive ends, we don't have, we don't, uh, we have a couple of young kids that's going to be really good. Uh, so we're going to have to get pressure from somewhere. You're not going to get it from defensive tackles. So you're going to get it from linebackers and you're going to get it from secondary people. That's where you're going to get the pressure. Until those young defensive ends come around. And they're going to be really, really good. Arden Key is going to be a really good player. Anybody else? I have a few quotes that... Uh, I think you'll be interested in. These are great sports quotes. Last year we couldn't win at home and we, worked, and we were losing on the road. My failure as a coach was that I couldn't think of any place else to play. Harry Neal, a professional hockey coach. Blind people came to the ballpark just to listen to him pitch. That was Reggie Jackson commenting on Tom Seaver. Doug Sanders, the professional golfer. I'm working as hard as I can to get my life and my cash to run out at the same time. If I can just die after lunch Tuesday, everything will be perfect. I got a few other guys. My knees look like they lost a knife fight with a midget. <laughs> E.J. Holabon from Kansas City linebacker regarding his 12 knee operation. Uh, Walt Garrison, I don't know, I only played there for nine years when he was asked if Tom Landry ever smiled. <laughs> and my favorite guy, Bum Phillips, he said the film looks suspiciously like the game itself. It, itself after viewing a lopsided loss to Atlanta. And Paul Horning, my all-time favorite, 
It was asked why his uh, wedding ceremony was done before noon. Paul Hardy, because if it didn't work out, I didn't want to blow the whole day. <laughs> Our biggest concern this season will be diaper rash. George McIntyre, Vanderbilt football coach, surveyed the team roster that included 26 freshmen and 25 sophomores. I have just a couple more. You know Murphy's Law? Things, things happen, they were, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> but these are Murphy's other laws. <laughs> Change is inevitable, except from a vending machine. <laughs> those who live by the sword get shot by those who don't. <laughs> if the shoe fits, get another one just like it. <laughs> the things that come to those who wait may be the things left by those who got there first. And my all-time favorite, give a man a fish, and he will eat it, eat it for a day. Teach a man to fish, and he will sit in the boat all day drinking beer. Thank y'all so much.